2021 was a pretty good year for McFarlane Toys' DC Multiverse. We saw a lot of positive changes from 2021, including better character selection and an increase in quality. But as always, with the good comes the bad, and of course today we have to talk about the bad. Because boy, there were some not so great things about DC Multiverse in 2021. You might want to grab yourself a cool drink, kick your feet up, and relax as we talk about the things that maybe weren't so awesome about McFarlane's DC Multiverse this past year. And be sure you stick around for our honorable mention before we reveal the worst thing about DC Multiverse in 2021. The fifth worst thing about DC Multiverse in 2021 is a farewell to arms. Maybe you noticed, maybe you didn't, but a lot of characters use guns in comic books and none of DC's characters are allowed to be marketed with guns anymore. So now Joker can't come with one of his prop guns anymore. Bloodsport and Peacemaker from the Suicide Squad wave weren't allowed to come with guns either. They had to come with melee weapons. And that's a little bit of a problem when you've got a lot of characters whose main weapon is a firearm. This really is not a fault of McFarlane Toys, so I'm not criticizing them, but this definitely crimps the line style a little bit when you have so many characters who do use guns. The fourth worst thing about DC Multiverse in 2021 is where are the women figures? You know, we get all kinds of action figures of Wonder Woman, of Harley Quinn, and Batgirl, but where are all the other women characters? There's been maybe a handful of other characters, but there's very few that I can think of. Most recently, there was a Catwoman in the Batman Wave announcement, and then there was Carrie Kelly Robin in the Dark Knight Returns Build a Horse Wave announced, but aside from that, it's kinda hard to think of any other women action figures in the line. Another thing that really bothers me about McFarlane Toys' selection of women action figures for their DC Multiverse line is the Suicide Squad wave did not have Ratcatcher in it. I didn't even realize this was going to be something that would bother me until I watched the Suicide Squad movie and then I looked at the wave and realized well, where's Ratcatcher? She was such an important character in that movie. She was there alongside all the other characters, and yet she doesn't get her own action figure? I really don't want to spoil the movie for anyone, but it can't be emphasized enough how important Ratcatcher was to the movie, and she really should have been represented in this line, and she just wasn't. And I'm a little embarrassed for McFarlane Toys because of it. I really do believe that half the line should be women. And going into 2022, I hope that we see a lot more women in DC Multiverse. The third worst thing about DC Multiverse in 2021 is inaccurate movie head sculpts. This was kind of a kicker this year because we saw a lot of nice movie figures based on Zack Snyder's Justice League. There were some pretty good ones. Darkseid was really cool, Superman was pretty cool, and the masked version of Batman was really nice. But then we got to the unmasked versions, and this is where we hit a little bit of a roadblock, because the unmasked Batman, unfortunately, doesn't look anything like Ben Affleck. And Harley Quinn, based on Birds of Prey, or Suicide Squad for that matter, doesn't look like Margot Robbie. And then you get over to Aquaman, and that doesn't look anything like the actor either. So, I don't know what's going on with the head sculpts over at McFarlane Toys, but they really need to kick those up a notch. The bodies look great, but those likenesses... I wonder whether or not McFarlane Toys doesn't have the rights, maybe, to make a likeness based on said actor like Ben Affleck or Margot Robbie. You'd think if that were the case, Warner Brothers would help work something out 
for all the collectibles that need to be made. The worst offender of the year, I thought, in terms of movie likenesses, had to be Bloodsport Unmasked, which was a Walmart exclusive. It did not look anything like Idris Elba. And I really cannot believe that this figure was allowed to be released when the face looked like this. And the real kicker about this is that there was an unmasked Peacemaker, which did look really good. It looked just like John Cena. So I know that it's not that McFarlane Toys can't do a movie likeness. The second worst thing about DC Multiverse in 2021 is pre-orders getting cancelled. This was a real problem this past year. There were a few toys that I was pretty hyped for and it just didn't come through. A lot of people ordered the Year 2 Batman figure, for instance, that was a Target exclusive, but it got cancelled for virtually everybody. I don't know anyone who actually got it. But not only that, we also have an instance with the Batman Who Laughs 4-pack that was recently released through Walmart, or maybe it wasn't released because a lot of people got their pre-orders cancelled yet again. Is everything alright at McFarlane Toys? What's going on over there that so many people are getting their pre-orders nerfed? And somewhat adjacent to this issue is that a lot of people pre-ordered Swamp Thing and when they got their pre-orders, they got the platinum version of Swamp Thing for whatever reason. Why, why, why would people be getting a platinum version of Swamp Thing if they ordered the regular green version? And while I'm on that point, why do platinum versions of these toys even exist. Before we get to our number one worst thing about DC Multiverse in 2021, I want to bring up the honorable mention for this past year. And this is one that I think bothers a lot of people. I think you'll really agree with me on this one. Our one and only honorable mention for the worst thing about DC Multiverse in 2021 is too much Batman. Admittedly, McFarlane's DC Multiverse has a lot of Batman. To the point where I'm starting to get visions of Kenner's Batman lines back in the 90s where we saw variation upon variation of Batman. The key difference between those though is that a lot of those Batman toys that were made as variations by Kenner were not based on any comic book source for the most part. Whereas the ones that McFarlane's making are all based on various things that have been seen in the comics. So it's nowhere near as bad as that. But still, there's a lot of Batman. It's gotten a little better because McFarlane Toys has been making more and more characters that aren't Batman. Thank goodness. But I would like to see more of the extended DC Universe represented here. Give us something more obscure. You can slip them in a collect and connect wave. That would be awesome. I think at this point we're all pining for a standard Wonder Woman and a litany of characters that we can fit on our Justice League team. And now at last, with our honorable mention out of the way, our number one worst thing about DC Multiverse in 2021 is bad Build-A-Figures. Oh boy, there were some clunkers this year. And the most notorious one, I think, has to be Bane from the Last Night on Earth wave. Oh, this one was so, so bad. He did not stay together at all. It was a catastrophic failure of design and how it was allowed to be released, how Quality Assurance did not catch that, is a mystery to me. Was Bane well detailed? Yes, he looked great, but form follows function. That's the way it always should be. But when you play with Bane, his hands come right off his arms, his legs come right off his hips. It's an utter failure. But he wasn't the only failure in 2021. Dark Father was also really bad. His legs don't stay on his hips, which isn't the worst thing ever because you can put them back on and they stay on fairly easily compared to Bane. So it's a better design overall, but trying to put 
His arms inside his sockets was nearly impossible without reaming out the holes inside of the body because for some reason the holes are so tight that I snapped a peg trying to put Dark Father's arm on him. It should not be hard to put a Build-A-Figure together. And I don't know why McFarlane Toys doesn't take design cues from Mattel or even Hasbro because they both had the Build-A-Figure down pat. At the moment, I'm still collecting the Suicide Squad King Shark wave and I'm hoping that this Build-A-Figure is going to be a drastic improvement on Bane and Dark Father because those just completely missed the mark in my eyes. To be perfectly honest, when I hear that they're releasing a new Collect and Connect wave, I groan a little bit because of Bane and Dark Father. Well, Soulmates, that covers the worst things about McFarlane's DC Multiverse in 2021. What do you think? the worst things about this line were this past year. Is your list about the same as mine, or is it completely different? I don't know, guys. Think about it. Make your list and post in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Be sure you let me know. And try to be constructive, too, because just saying all of it doesn't really get anyone anywhere. If you support what I do, please click subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single video of mine when it comes out. And if you want to hang out with me and my soulmates, I stream live on Twitch Monday through Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be back in 2022 with another Worst of the Year list about DC Multiverse. And until then, with love for me to you, bye bye